はい、次の演者の先生のご紹介となります。次の演者の先生は、あのセルボックスソリューション社の創業 COO であるキャサリン・アドル・コーパー博士です。アドル・コーパー博士について、逆行きをご紹介させていただきます。アドル・コーファー博士はです、ね、スイス ETH で学位を取得後、米国総区研究所等で細胞学研究に取り組まれました。その後、まあ、分野を変えてバイオテック産業界に転じられ、エボテック社の事業開発ディレクターなどで活躍されました。現在はその研究者、アバジレスパーソン、アントレプレナーとしてご活躍です。また、同時にですね、長らく、まあ、これ、プライベートな話になりますが、セーリングのドイツ代表選手として、オリンピックにも出場されていたトップアスリートでした。で、そこでですね、1989年に日本の津市でですね、開催された国際大会でも初めて世界チャンピオンになられたことからですね、日本に思い入れがあるとお聞きしております。現在はセルボックスソリューション、ソリューションズ社の創業 CEO として、えー、事業開発に取り組まれています。あの先月ですね、あのアドル・コーパー先生はですね、あの東京の方にいらっしゃいまして、あの私の方とですもう交えてですね、あの対談させていただきました。その時はあの日本橋でしたけど、非常にあのあの素晴らしいセルボックス社のですね事業計画やですね、あのまあこの手からのプランについてあのお聞きいたしまして、あのこの分野はですね、やはりあの盛り上がっているというところで、あのやはりこの企業というのは非常に台風の目になるのではないかなというふうに思いました。それでは発表の方について準備をしていただきたいと思います。Professor Adolfo, could you prepare your slide by sharing the, your slide? Okay. Yes, I... すみません。あすみません。さらにあの質問に関しまして、チャットの方であの引き続き書いていただきたいんですけれど、あのアドル・コーパー先生にですね、あのまあ、その質問内容がですねより分かるように、できれば英語であの質問していただけるようにお願いいたします。よろしいでしょうか。Okay, please. Yes, I can see your slides. Yes, no problem. And I can see your voice. Yeah, sure.、Uh, so、please. First of all, thank you so much. Whatever you said、uh, was probably right. <clears throat>、um, uh, we, uh, uh, we, uh, I'm very delighted、uh, to be part of the seminar. And、um, uh, I was asked、uh, to talk a little bit about transport,、um, optimal uh, condition. And、uh, you know, the speaker before me, she was focusing on cryopreservation, and now we will see. Um, you know, having something brand new, maybe that is something which you, it's also very innovative for yourself. So, thank you very much.、Um, I, and I would like to start、uh, talking about logistics and just give you uh, uh, a quick,、uh, you know, very brief and very fast.、Uh, logistic is actually very important. And, you know, when you do research and you work on therapies or on、uh, fundamental research, The only thing what you not think about is logistics and how you transport because you, you are working on drug discovery, on、uh, finding out something. But that logistic is a very important part we heard already. And it is、uh, you know, not only you know, one thing, it has a lot of steps、uh, you have to be taken care of. And uh, uh, what you want. Is you want to have a safe transport. It has to be efficient, budget, and time. It has to be reliable and traceable, as we learned, and sustainable. And, and this is what you want for all your therapies or for all your、uh, components or cells or、uh, whatever biological material you want to transport. But what you actually want is you want to have a successful transport, and that means. It looks ideally exactly when it arrives.、Uh, so, what you ship is what you get. And that it doesn't change in the behavior、uh, and in the quality and in the quantity. What you definitely don't want is that when, you, when it arrives, that it is different because then it doesn't fulfill what it actually should fulfill. And ideally, when you transport something, that it arrives even in a better condition. So, this, for example, is when you ship banana. You ship banana when they are really green and they arrive on the spot where they are selling it in this optimal condition, yellow.、Um, 
so uh, the relevance of transportation, I have, I, I don't have to tell you, but it has to have a competitive advantage, especially in the life science sector. It has to be efficient. It has to be also, uh, it should uh, decrease the, the, the production cost, ideally. And of course, overall, it should be um, profitable. You know, if, if, if a transportation is too expensive, um, then definitely uh, you will not reach the market. And when you look at the life science logistic sectors, you have therapeutic products, medical devices, consumer health care, drug ingredients, and healthcare services. So, and, and I'm actually today focusing on the biotechnology and the therapeutic products. What we know is um, it, it, the cell complexity over the years. So when I, I'm a molecular biologist by training, and uh, you know when I, I I did my PhD, my postdoc, I worked actually with quite simple cells. Although we started to working with stem cells, we did inducible knockouts, and the system starts to be more and more complex. Now we are dealing with organoids, 3D printed material with uh, IPS derived transformed cells, um, fragile cell systems. Um, uh, to, for example, in, instead of using um, uh, animal models, that you use cell systems for the toxicology, for example. So all very complex and thereby really sensitive. And when you look at the passengers, you know, as I said, organoids. Um, uh, in the gene and th cell therapy, we have uh, therapies like CAR therapies, NK therapies, which um, are already on the market and where, of course, the normal uh, uh, cryopreservation, as uh, uh, my the speaker before me uh, uh, pointed out, is a, a well-established way of transportation. You also learned already about the, you know, the transportation, transporting a product is a real big process where, where you package uh, the material, um, you have to be in compliance with all the guidelines. You have to have a data management, the transportation by itself, the handover to receiver and make a quality check. And then, of course, the tracking of what happened during the transport. And what we believe is that sensitive cells need ideal physiological condition to achieve optimal results in research and in therapies. So not all of them uh, are, uh, it's, it's good for them to be frozen down. Cryopreservation is the standard. Um, and in a lot of cases, it's absolutely necessary and, uh, and a good practice. And uh, so far, there's also no alternative uh, for long distance transport. And um, the so-called freeze-thaw cycle uh, is a stress for the biological material. And of course, a lot of protocols are established and are evolving to, uh, to, to, to actually de-stress the situation of freezing and thawing. The pain points are, but that there are sensitive cells which you lose 90% uh, after you thaw them. Uh, you have countless waste working hours to, to get them back up to the same quantity as you wanted to have them. And you have low reliability in biological material because also the, the, the metabolism might change, the protein profile might change. So you, it's not what you ship, it's what you get. And especially, uh, you know, in the uh, cell and gene therapy, when you when you need uh, from the patients the the cells which you then want to process, these patients are really sick. They do not have all these good, you know, uh, healthy donor cells. And therefore, when you freeze these cells and you thaw them, you might even not be able to establish a therapy for this patient because the material is not good enough. And this is, you need to find other ways of shipment uh, so that fresh, fresh in to the processing side uh, is probably a good alternative. And this is what we, what I would like to talk about today is that try, so if you, if you, if you transport under optimal condition, that means you keep them under optimal physiological condition, 37 degrees, 
5% CO2, you have a lower cell loss and you save time. I will come to that. And if you have all the reliable tracking and software like the CFR 21 part 11 software, you, you, you are already cell and gene therapy friendly. And when you look at what is the future, what we will envision of the material we are going to patches to, to, to use for therapies, here is a good solution that you don't freeze them, but you still transport them under optimal condition. Here is an example of uh, when, you, when, you, uh, uh, when you transport the cells, uh, at one point, you have to freeze them down you, uh, over time. And when you thaw them, you are losing these cells. So uh, if you do the cryopreservation and thereby you are losing time. And when you look at uh, the, the, the suites for the GMP facilities, um, they're horribly expensive. So when you, when you have like three, four days more, uh, that is very cost uh, uh, sensitive, you know, so ideally you, you are not having all that as well, despite all the changes in the metabolism. And uh, this is something, it, it doesn't matter up if it is warm chain, like what I'm describing, or cold chain, like cryopreservation, um, the, uh, the complexity of the uh, of, of, of the transport is actually also um, re uh, responsible for the market size. So if you cannot decrease the complexity, you will not have a big market. So ideally, for example, organ on a chip, in the moment you hardly can transport them because you cannot freeze them. So ideally you find a, a good way of transport them and then you can uh, increase the market size and the distribution for example, all over the world. Um, I actually, you know, I, I was asked to give a little scientific presentation um, and that's, uh, I'm more than happy to do that because what we wanted to find out, what is actually uh, an optimal transport for natural killer cells? And uh, we work together with Fraunhofer, probably everybody is very familiar with that. Fraunhofer is an applied institution uh, for science, uh, having life science on one part, but also other sectors. And here we work with them together, um, uh, the ITSI as, as we call it, uh, and, and, and looked at um, if uh, natural killer cells are better transported frozen or as we call it warm chain. Um, we know, and it is known that you can freeze uh, natural killer cells, um, but they are very cryosensitive. So. What we did is we um, uh, uh, we, we identify uh, you know first of all which NK cells you know from which donor and what we used is we used the cell box it's a device which can transport 37 degrees at 37 degrees and using 5% CO2. The first thing what we had to do was we had to look for the ideal bag because these bags have to be CO2 permeable. And we combined, uh, uh, you know, uh, different, uh, you know, uh, pro uh, producers like Miltony or Origin, and we decided using Origin because they fulfilled, um, uh, uh, they, are, they are close to the so-called GREX control, um, and we saw that we are probably using this one so that we have a really good combination, uh, 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 that we can com uh, compare it uh, in, in, in that way. And then we use this cell box, uh, runs for 48 hours, uh, remains the temperature, I will show you the data, has CO2 supply and we did a data logging. So that means it, within that comes with the data logging and uh, that we can see of what happened during transport. The experimental approach was we are taking three donors um, uh, we isolated NK cells, we expanded them, and then we, uh, you know, distributed them. Uh, some are left in the incubator, some are in the origin bag incubator, uh, and then one was transported in the cell box, warm chain, and the other one were cryopreserved. After that, after the transport, we recultivated the, um, the cells and uh, did a quality control to see of uh, what happened to the cells, looking at the cell count, 
uh, as the pH, cell phenotype, cell exhausting, killing function, sterility. And of course, we looked at mycoplasma, which is important uh, to make sure that you have uh, the optimal condition for these cells. And what are the results? Here, actually, you see the survival. Um, the, uh, so after shipment, um, you can see that uh, when you saw the cells, the, saw, uh, the cells are uh, 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 um, alive right after thawing. But in the gray, you can see that uh, after cryopreservation, the cells die off within three, four days, losing um, uh, 50 percent uh, of, the, uh, of the cells, which you actually inject. If you use a, a cell shipment, uh, live, uh, not frozen, um, you can even see that they kept on growing a little bit. Um, uh, and, and, and this is something due that it behaves exactly like it would have been in the incubator. So we have even an increase of the cells uh, slightly. Um, then uh, 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 next we looked at that what is actually on the surface of the cells, what happened. And if you compare and you look for markers, uh, you know, for the NK cell phenotype, you can see that um, uh, using, uh, using the, the shippers, so transporting them in one chain, there's no change. Whereas if you have cryopreservation and the one who survived, they actually even have not the optimal uh, uh, receptors on the surface of the cells or even are dimerized, as you can see here. Um, and then looking at the cytotoxicity activity, um, and uh, we, 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 we see how effective these uh, cells are. And again, we compared uh, G-Rex is the reference cell box shipped in the cell box shipper or cryopreserved. And we see that um, nothing changed in the cell box. But if you do cryopreservation, the cytotoxicity is significantly, activity is significantly reduced. And then looking at the data of how it was transported, uh, the transportation was done. As we can see, uh, uh, incubation temperature exactly 30 uh, 37 degrees. Uh, the ambient in yellow uh, temperature was uh, different. It changed uh, uh, during the transport and then uh, uh, also the CO2 was um, uh, exactly the same. Here, for example, you can see there was one time uh, the incubation chamber was open, so it releases uh, the CO2 but immediately goes back up. Um, so, making sure that nothing changed, uh, uh, so it behaved exactly like the incubator uh, where the cells are uh, left as a control. The conclusion. Um, I summarize it in that is that um, we have full recovery of the cell numbers. Uh, we can we can see that uh, 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 that, that they, they display a normal phenotype and they have an exhausting that means none of the cells will die and that they are having behaving exactly like uh, the cytotoxicity tests are the same. And, uh, uh, and this is actually something which we should put in consideration that what you inject into patients might not be the optimal, uh, what we could achieve if we also look at the logistic uh, uh, part of the therapy. Um, would be better if we would, which, uh, would inject 100% active cells. So this is a good example of seeing uh, we, are, we are at the beginning, but we really believe that we can help, uh, you know, using warm chain to increase the efficiency to get the material fresh in to the processing site from the, uh, from the patient to the process and ship it back in a condition that 100% activity is injected into patient, for example. So, of course, we looked at other uh, uh, e evaluation of, you know, what could we transport, uh, uh, you know, uh, under this optimal condition. Because as I said, I would not say cryopreservation is not good. It's, it's, it is probably in some cases or in a lot of cases, the optimal way of transporting uh, material. Um, uh, and it's safe 
and you can keep it forever, but not all, all of them. For example, if you look at microglia cells, iPSC derived, um, to, uh, these actually, they really had difficulties or were not able to transport them. So they had to do all their essays inside. They could not uh, share it with their collaborators. And so we did a transport in, uh, incubator uh, versus cell box and looked at what is the difference, you know, and, and do they behave? And, and of course, a lot of questions are asked if adherent cells detach because of vibration um, uh, uh, or because of, you, you know, something that happened during transport. And here we see that uh, nothing changed, actually. They behaved exactly uh, the same. And uh, uh, the, uh, the morphology didn't change. And also the phagocytic capacity um, of these microglia cells uh, are kept uh, identically uh, in the uh, uh, in in, in, in the cell box as it was in the incubator. Uh, another another um, uh, validation uh, where they really had trouble because they couldn't transport it is retina organoid. And retina organoid, um, uh, uh, if, if you freeze them, so organoids, to freeze organoids is not easy. There might be ways, but it is much better to keep them alive. Islet cells, you know, so we, we did a lot of testing on that. And here we actually looked at the su uh, survival of, this, uh, of the um, uh, organoids and, of course, of their morphology and their viability. And here we see that uh, it is exactly when you transport them, a uh, warm chain and not cryopreserved, um, uh, it, it behaves exactly like it would be in the incubator, which is a reliable way of sending uh, organoids around the world. Another one, uh, uh, another test, uh, which, uh, uh, which we also um, uh, looked at is uh, 3D bioprinted material everybody familiar with, not possible to, to freeze it. And thereby we, uh, we, we transported uh, 3D bioprinted skin substitutes um, and looked at the survival and the, uh, you know, did a histological scoring and saw that the material actually it behaved exactly as it would be in the incubator. And I think this is important um, uh, 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 to see that there are so many complex um, uh, uh, advanced therapies and uh, uh, you know new essays for drug discovery um, where we believe it, they're, they're so hard to free. So we need an alternative to transport these precious material. And then of course, you know, when you when you when you look at that, you also look up the uh, the packaging. How do you package your material? And there's, uh, you know, you can, for example, uh, use uh, here. I, I I brought an example. Um, Rodex. Rodex is a material where the 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 media is getting more viscous. So, so, so when you transport it, that it is not, you know, there's no spilling over, and it is actually easy to uh, 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 to resolve and exchange media so that you can keep on working with that. This could be um, uh, the future also if you if you have fragile material, for example, uh, little organoids uh, or something which you don't want that there are uh, a shaking too much. Um, of course, you can also look at technologies, uh, you know, where you have disposables uh, ready, ready to use, uh, where you can put Kugelmeier, for example, is, a, is an example. Uh, they transport with their uh, microtiter plates um, uh, organoids, which are, you know, like really in, in one while uh, you will find one organoid. So these are ways of transporting um, frozen, not frozen. In this case, <clears throat> they also they are working with islet cells, and they don't have any other way than transporting uh, their uh, organoids alive. And then, of course, <clears throat> I uh, also want to uh, point out the data management 
because um, you know generating data of how you transport uh, new therapies, how you transport fragile material is very important because we can learn from it and make sure that with the data we generate ensure optimal transport for uh, related products, for example. Also uh, to find out what is the best way, what is the best packaging, what is the best uh, uh, you know, temperature, because as I said, you could, uh, for example, um, say 37 degrees is, you know, we are still uh, having proliferating cells, but what we actually want is we want to uh, reduce the metabolism um, so that the cells are not growing, you know, uh, keep on growing. And here, of course, you know, for example, using cell box, uh, you can also transport at room temperature or below to make sure that the metabolism is slowing down. And these data are very important to share, um, you know, to make sure that all, you know, the different cell types uh, can, uh, uh, you know, have, they all have different ways of shipment uh, in the future. And then, of course, you know, uh, as you saw, probably that is for uh, when you look at the future of transportation, um, uh, they, they are, you um, already cryo shipper which have these cardanic suspensions and in the future uh, there might be other ways so that you can have your uh, organ on a ship or or whatever fragile systems that they're always in uh, upright position and here companies come up with all these fancy uh, ac uh, activities to keep them always uh, in an optimal condition during the transport. And then, of course, uh, you know, last but not least, uh, the sky is the limit. So we are actually also, uh, uh, you know, are talking to companies who have already drones. They are used in hospitals to transport uh, uh, drugs from, uh, you know, patients uh, and, 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 and medical centers. Uh, and uh, of course, you know, uh, logistic doesn't end, uh, uh, you know, in the moment, and there will be more and more new uh, uh, innovations coming. Uh, we have to make sure that it reaches the patient safe and sound, and that we can help uh, in, in, to enable therapies to go to the market. And this is where I would like to stop. Thank you so much for your attention. I, I don't see anybody. Uh, so. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much uh, for your talk. Uh, since the uh, Dr. Hayashi uh, has a uh, has a schedule, and so that he, as a chairman, he left the uh, meeting for for his uh, institute work, and so I was asked to cover that uh, chairmanship for your presentation from now. Uh, thank you very much for uh, for your talk, Catherine. And so the we got uh, several questions. Uh, so first one is a bit uh, more general. So any uh, from Watanabe-san, AGC, uh, that's written. And uh, so any, how are sports and medicine connected? <laughs> so <laughs> in your uh, career, so how does, <laughs> in my career, how does sports and uh, medicine, yeah, actually, it's very close, huh? It's uh, you know, I'm I'm very much uh, in the prevention, of course, you know, uh, and uh, I think uh, you you better ask how does um, uh, management and sports. So if you are, uh, you know, if if you're doing sports and you're very competitive, you have to market yourself. Uh, you have to be extremely innovative, and so I think. Uh, 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 it it all fits together, and I have actually two. You know, if I if I look at myself, there are two things. I love sports, and I love uh, uh, you know moving, and I love science. I, I think you know how the body is 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 working, and what to do to keep it healthy. I think these are the two main things, and that's why uh, I uh, uh, that's sports <laughs> for me. Okay. 
Thank you very much. And the next question is from uh, Motoki san. So, Masamichi Motoki san from Torei. Uh, so, thank you very much for your introduction, introducing your innovative zero transport device. So, is your device available to use in Japan currently? That is the question. Um, uh, in the moment, so I, I had the honor to, to be in Japan, uh, how, how was it, three weeks, four weeks ago? Uh, and we are really uh, looking, first of all, yes, we have a distributor, um, uh, which we can send you so you can buy the device already in Japan. Uh, but we are also looking for uh, uh, maybe doing services, so establishing a hub for cell box services and transportation in Japan. And, and here we are looking a little bit in the Osaka uh, Kobe region um, uh, because we really believe that this the way of transportation in the cell and gene therapy sector, we could really uh, help. Uh, uh, you know, for example, shipping in uh, from patients material to the processing site uh, and then also finding a way of the distribution to the patient. And uh, uh, yeah, so yes, we, we are in Japan, not not fully established, but if you would like to test a device, we are more than happy to to help uh, uh, getting a device to the place uh, and discussing that. Thank you very much for your answer. The next question uh, is from, uh, I don't see the affiliation, but the uh, Arakawa-san. So Yoshi, Yoshiho uh, Arakawa-san. So thank you very much. Thank you for your presentation. What kind of uh, biomaterials are still difficult to maintain the quality of, of when transported by cell box? How do you plan to overcome it? So any difficult to maintain the quality of when you transport the by cell box? The, any, the, anything the still, any points? Like uh, any, uh, what kind of biomaterials are still difficult to yeah. maintain the quality? Uh, okay. yeah. I, I think, you know, the, the, the problem of oh, the, you know, the challenge of warm chain transport is that after a certain time period, you have to change the media. So, uh, you know, it, like in an incubator, you cannot keep the cells forever. And, and, and I think this is the limiting factor. So we are currently saying 48 hours works well. Um, uh, everything after that, you really have to make sure at one point that you have to change the media, uh, you know, especially, you know, talking IPS cells uh, or other fragile cell systems. Um, organ, you know, lab on a chip, for example, since here you can put little pumps in it and change that, that is easier. Um, but I would say if you want to do a transport, you have to work with a good logistic provider together that they really rely on the timing um, because at one point, yeah, they knew the, the cells need nutrition. Yeah. Okay. So any uh, questions from the audience? Uh もしあのえっと何か直接コストもいただくこともできますので、えっとチャットなんかであのあえっと手を挙げるところありますレイハンドあると思うので、それでえっと直接お話いただいても構わないですし、あるいは日本語でえっとコメントいただけましたらえっと
make sure that there is an equal distribution, but we also monitor uh, shaking, so vibrating, tilting. So we, we monitor every minute what is the, ma the major tilt of the whole box, uh, as well as uh, if someone opened the lid. Uh, 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 so we can we can see all that, you know, and that's you know exactly what happened to the cells, or if someone switched it off, for example, something right. which we can definitely see. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you very much uh, for your explanation. The so in that case, the um, so how how you can uh, get the data? So you close the close the box and then transport to the. Uh, point B from A, and then the take might have taken like a uh, four hours or uh, twelve hours, forty less than forty eight hours. You can do it, but how you get the data after uh, arriving at the point B, and then like a uh, hook the like a USB memory, or how you get the that digital data? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So. Um, so what we uh, what we actually have is a uh, software included, so that uh, of course in the moment we do not upload it in the cloud. Uh, it is in the uh, it is in the cell box, and when it arrives uh, at uh, at the destination, um, you can uh, we have an, uh, a Bluetooth, um, so you can and, and an application, and with the application uh, with an app you can download the data on your device, on your computer or on your cell phone, and then you can retrieve all the data and look at what happened. Uh, and this is something, it's a data security. So we are a little bit scared if you can upload it to a cloud, there might be, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, we, we have to make sure that the data are always 100% secure. This is why we keep it, uh, but you can retrieve it onto your device and then send it. Uh, uh, to make sure that you uh, can do the evaluation of the data. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much. And uh, how about the like a clinical trial or uh, any experience for the real uh, like a case, uh, even yeah. as a test or yeah. the future plan of your technology yeah. implementation to the uh, the world? Yeah. So. So what we are currently, so maybe that's also might be interested for, 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 for the people who are listening. So we are looking for very early clinical trials, uh, you know, in the IND process, um, because we want to learn um, more about clinical, you know, testing and where this uh, cell box could actually fit. We are already engaged in clinical trials, for example, for, um, uh, retina patches, um, since they cannot be frozen um, with the NIH. Uh, we are also involved in some clinical uh, tests um, using um, organoids, uh, where they cannot they, they cannot be frozen at all. Um, we are involved in a in a rare disease. There are also skin patches they are using. Uh, and uh, here they had to deal in phase two with an anaphylactic shock with DMSO to the patient. So they had to change the whole uh, way of how they apply it to the patient. And they are now uh, testing cell box so that uh, you make sure that the, this, um, the material is not cryopreserved because of the DMSO. Actually, we never heard that before that DMSO is related to an anaphylactic shock. This is the first time that uh, we got told that this could be the cause. Um, mm. So we are already engaging into it and we are more than happy of testing. We just won a grant in the EU. Uh, th th this is a big grant uh, where, we, um, where we can verify and validate our box in the logistic services for cell and gene therapy. So here we can even collaborate uh, with, uh, in, you know, uh, groups which are interested in uh, going into this process. Yeah, thank you very much. Okay. So any, uh, uh, えっと、他に何かえっと、ご質問とありますでしょうか。何かございました。あ、えっと、あ、では、川松先生お願いいたします。
Hey, thank you very much for your nice presentation. Catherine, how are you? <clears throat> how are you? <laughs> Good to really see nice you. Nice to meet you again. So uh, no, I have one question, quick question. So do you have any time limit for transport? So say four hours and eight hours and uh, how, because we're going to ship in some kind of international transport. Is it possible? How long does it last? <laughs> uh, OK, so we uh, we guarantee 48 hours. Um, mm. So uh, so that means in, in, we have to organize it pretty well if you want to if you want to ship it to Germany. Um, but there are, as you know, uh, 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 transportation companies, logistic companies like Zulik or uh, they actually, we talked to Zulik uh, in, 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 in the Asian market, but also World Korea or in Germany, Time Matters, Lufthansa, reliable, you know, um, okay. uh, we, uh, we have uh, people who can do that. 48 hours, we would guarantee. Okay, thank you very much, Sonia. Very useful information. So one more question. So, are you a, you have some parameter for the cell block like uh, shaking, vibration, temperature? Is there any kind of the uh, control value? It, the maybe the out of spec something like that. The so if you have some kind of spec and out of uh, OS something like out of spec or some deviation. What kind of the uh, system you are going to apply for this kind of this, if you find some deviation in it? So you mean like like if something goes wrong of what we do yeah. then? Or yeah, in case. I, I, uh, I, I can tell you what we actually experienced is a CO2 overshoot during the flight. Mm. Um, because, you know, the, 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 the pressure is changing. And mm. we had one flight where they, you know, it's one flight, and then in the second flight we had this overshoot, and we actually now even changed the way we, you know, we we can, and and this is why it's the overshoot, because when you land, it sucks in all the air which is around uh, the cell box, and since we are flying with dry ice. The dry ice is also, uh, the, uh, the CO2 is going into the incubation chamber, but also around, and then it sucks in uh, everything. But we got rid of that as well um, and, and, and tested that. So we can now even assure that it is 0.1% exact on the CO2. So we, 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 do a, we did a lot of testing uh, on, uh, you know, how, how to transport it up under optimal condition and we can assure 37 degrees uh, or lower you know like 21 28 degrees and we can assure up to 10 percent uh, uh, co2 which you probably don't want um, uh, for these 48 hours the tilting of course you know if someone if you send it by fedex I, I could assume that they will not, you know, use it in a proper way and there might be upside down uh, eventually. So you need a good logistic okay, provider. Thank you. thank you very much for the detailed answer. Thank you. あの、先生ありがとうございました。それでは、えっと、オーディエンスの皆様から何かございましたら、えあの、ご質問いただければと思いますが、もしないようでありましたら、えっと少し時間はあの予定よりもあの早いですけれども、あのこちらのよろしいですかね。Okay, uh, so thank you very much for your uh, introduction of your technology. Uh, very informative and uh, yeah. Uh, I think uh, many people got interested in using, testing your uh, technology. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you very I much. I have to say thank you. I have to say thank you. And I'm more than happy to come back, uh, you know, <laughs> soon to Japan. Uh, I always like that. I, I can tell you one last thing. I became world champion in Japan in 1989. And this is actually, I remember when we were world champion and the sun was going down. And uh, it was in uh, Tsu City, Tsu. Uh, uh, this I will always remember, and uh, it will always remember me on Japan. Uh, and I hope I can see you all uh, again. And good luck uh, okay. to your uh, association. Okay. All the best.
Thank and you. I step out. Tschüss. <laughs> Alles Gute. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you very much. ありがとうございました。ありがとうございました。あの、ありがとうございました。えっとですね、あの事務局様の方にあのお渡ししたいと思います。ありがとうございました。はい、妹さんどうもありがとうございました。川端先生、えー、林さん、えー、どうもありがとうございました。えっ、ー、とまあ新しいモダリティが出てきて、えー、注目されるようになったビジネス技術かなと。思って伺っておりました、えー、テクニカルセミナー、えー、奇数月に開催予定なので、えー、また今後とも皆様のご参加をお待ちしております、えー、今日はどうもありがとうございました失礼いたしますありがとうございましたありがとうございました失礼いたしますありがとうございました,ましたどうも失礼しますどうも